Okay. We're getting started. First of all, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for enrolling in VGC 101, um, Pokemon Academy. This, the purpose of this class is to educate all of you, um, wishful, hopeful Pokemon trainers and make you into powerful Pokemon competitors. Um, the class format is lecture based. There will be questions at the end. Please hold your questions until the end. Um, questions are for subscribers only because like that's more realistic, realistically, um, you do not need to buy a textbook for this class. That is not required. I do not believe in paying $300 for a textbook, which will go out of date in one to two years. That's the biggest, uh, that's the biggest scam. That's, of, uh, well, not the biggest scam, but it's another way that colleges, colleges take advantage of impoverished students. Anyway, as I said, the purpose of this class is to educate you all um, on the fundamentals of Pokemon and then, and then to go on even further past the fundamentals to teach you some advanced concepts. Um, there will be homework. Homework is not required, but it is recommended. Um, again, this is a class where you're going to get out of it what you put into it. Um, this is not a class where I am interested in, in testing everybody here on all of the ins and outs and intricacies of Pokemon. This is, this is a class where, you know, your parents paid a lot of money to send you here. So if you don't want to waste their money, then it's in your best interest to pay attention and do your best. So there will be homework. It is optional. Um, there may be tests and quizzes. I am not sure. Anyway, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started and let's talk about Pokemon. So are you ready? Pokemon is a franchise that's very well known. There is, and no, it's the largest uh, media franchise, I believe in the world. Um, but for some reason, or for you know numerous reasons, competitive Pokemon is not very well known. Despite Pokemon being one of the most recognizable um, and popular franchises, competitive Pokemon is, is a surprise to people. If I went up to a stranger on the street and I talked about competitive Pokemon, there's a very good chance they would think that I was talking about Pokemon Go, which does actually have a competitive format. However, um, that's not what we're talking about. So what is competitive Pokemon? The way that I always like to explain it is um, it's a combination of chess and poker. It's a turn-based competitive video game uh, that's a simultaneous move game that it combines. It's a traditional strategy game in a sense, um, but also deals with uncertainty. There's a lot of probability management um, in addition to information management, which are skills that are not always common in other other games in general. Um, for those of you who follow Super Smash Brothers, one key difference between Super Smash Brothers and a game like Pokemon, although I will say there are many, is the fact that in Super Smash Brothers the character that you pick is always the same. So a character like Fox McCloud always has the same back air, always has the same neutral air, um, etc. Always has the same neutral B. In Pokemon, however, uh, Executor can be used in a multitude of ways. And so figuring out how your opponent is using their Pokemon and what kind of Pokemon they are and how they are trained is essential. That's what we mean when we say information management. When we talk about probability management, that has to do with the fact that there are a lot of percentage chances in Pokemon that are under 1% or 100%. Um, for example, not every move has 100% accuracy. Uh, many moves have secondary effects that only trigger a, like some of the time. For example, Rock Slide, one of the most famous VGC moves, has a chance to flinch, which is not 100%. So that's why I like to describe it as chess combi combined with poker, because while there are very clear examples of macro game plans while there are very clear examples of um board position and where you know overall goals and where you need to go there's also the very real thing that there there's not always a hundred percent safe win conditions so how do you go how do you how do you balance building a strategy when there's uncertainty um additionally pokemon is extremely complex we're going to talk more about this later However, um, there is basically effectively an infinite combination, um, <laughs> effectively an infinite combination of Pokemon move stats and abilities. Um, when you consider all of the various possibilities, it's not literally infinite, but it's, it's too much. Like it would, it would take me, I don't, I actually don't know how to calculate it. It's, it's close to infinite. It's effectively infinite for in, in human non-computer terms. Let's move on. So what is VGC? Because if you are interested in competitive Pokemon, there's a very good chance that you have heard of or are interested in VGC. VGC is the official competitive format for Pokemon. 
When I say official format, I mean Pokemon themselves, the company, runs tournaments. TPCI, the Pokemon Company International. VGC stands for Video Game Championships. So, most of you are... If you, are, if you have played Pokemon before, the VGC might seem slightly unfamiliar. The reason is that, first of all, unlike in the game where um, you you bring six Pokemon and you know you play your six against your opponent's six, in VGC you only use four Pokemon each game. That's a big change from, from traditional playthroughs where you just use six. The other main uh, difference is that in VGC the battles are double battles. This introduces an entirely different dimension to Pokemon because there's a lot of strategies that are exclusive to double battles. Um, and if not exclusive, that they, they work very differently in double battles. So it's a very, very different style of playing the game. Um, in terms of the tournament structure, tournaments are best of three um, and they are Swiss. What Swiss means, and I'm not talking about the cheese, haha. <laughs> um, <laughs> Swiss means that you play, let's say, nine rounds. It's, it's determined by the number of players at the beginning of the tournament, um, and you normally try to play until that there's um, there's one person who is undefeated. So each round, you play against somebody who most likely has the same record as you. So if I have two wins and one loss, I'll play against somebody else who has two wins and one loss. You do this for however many rounds. So even if you lose five games in a row, six games in a row, you still, you still continue playing. So you can lose all your games and still play nine rounds. Um, at the end of Swiss, let's say nine rounds, eight rounds, seven rounds, then the top X, normally top eight, top 16, or top 32, occasionally top 64. This year, we might actually have some top 64s. Um, those players move on to a single elimination best of three bracket. So um, it's Swiss followed by top cut. Some tournaments, instead of going straight to top cut, will have a day two Swiss format where the top... 64 or 32 or however many people had two losses or less normally those players will move on to play another five or six rounds of swiss and then we'll move on to a top eight another important thing to note about vgc is that there are no duplicate pokemon and there is no duplicate items this is something that's very different than traditional single battles uh, where you can have duplicate items though duplicate pokemon are not allowed and additionally certain pokemon are banned so the rules change every single year for VGC. VGC 2020 is different than 2019, is different than 2018, etc. Um, and additionally, the Pokemon that are allowed have an enormous impact on the metagame. When I say metagame, um, I'm talking about the Pokemon within a rule set that are very common. So for example, on the screen, you can see Excadrill and Braviary, and those Pokemon are currently very common in the VGC 2020 meta. However, last year, these Pokemon had almost no usage. So um, a lot of whether a Pokemon is good, you know, good being relative, it depends on the other Pokemon that are allowed. So each year in VGC, the rules change, which keep it very dynamic and very, um, very interesting. Even when a new game does not come out, the rules will still change. Um, like I mentioned, it's double battle only, um, and all Pokemon are set to level 50. So, uh, even a Pokemon under level 50 will be set to level 50. That's important because there are certain strategies that rely on a Pokemon being underleveled, so those strategies cannot be used um, in the video game championships. The, the the video game championships are a yearly circuit. I'll probably talk more about this in a future uh, video. However, there's a yearly circuit. You earn points by going to events. Once you get 400 points, you qualify for Worlds. Um, and in addition to that, there is also uh, certain players are given extra bonuses. For example, flying around the world. Um, there is somewhat recently, a month ago, less than a month ago, a tournament hosted in Brazil that I um, I could have gone to. They would have paid me to, paid me to go there. So that's one advantage of what an advantage of playing VGC. You get to travel around the world. I personally have been to Hawaii, Vancouver um, for free. Both of those, uh, Australia for free, um, London, California, a bunch of times. I live on the East Coast. Um, and a bunch of other wonderful places that I would never have gotten to go to Berlin um, that I would never have gotten to go to otherwise. Um, additionally, you can win money. So I won nationals last year and the total monetary benefit I got from that, from winning one tournament, from playing one weekend, um, 14 games of Pokemon or something, maybe a little more. Um, I won about $10,000 from that all in all, maybe a little more. So that, there's, a little, there's a big reason to play VGC. Um, the game is extremely fun. Um, there's this international community. You get to travel around the world and you can make money. So there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of perks and those are just a few. I could talk about why people play VGC for a whole that could be a whole lesson. <sighs> yes, of course VGC is not is not the 
biggest, even within Pokemon. Single battling is more common, but um, I do hope that Pokemon can grow. Uh, that's one of the reasons I wanted to, to start this class. Let's move on. So, when you're talking about Pokemon and uh, for singles and doubles, let's talk about the type chart. I also should mention that um, VGC events are only, they're only in person. There's no, there, well, there actually are some online events and you can actually get points that will go towards qualifying for the world championships, e like even online. However, um, most of the events are in person and you can, um, I don't, in past years, you were not able to qualify with only online events, even if you were to win everything, I believe. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, that's one advantage to play singles. Well, yeah, I mean, you can play VGC online as well, but yeah. So there's 18 total types in Pokemon. For those of you um, who are not familiar with this, I know this can seem a little intimidating, but it's not as complicated as it looks. Do we, uh, the, sorry, the way that you read this chart is you pick one of these types on the left. For example, let's look at fire and you compare it in kind of this drop down line here. Um, so fire matched with fire, you have a red, not very effective fire attacking water, not very effective, but fire attacking grass is super effective. Same with ice. So you can do this for the whole type chart. Um, the easiest way to the easiest way to, to, ma to master this type chart is to do it like one type at a time rather than trying to do the whole thing at once, in my opinion. This type chart is extremely important. So each type has its own unique relationships with the other types. Think of this as a giant, giant game of rock, paper, scissors, except instead of three options, you actually have 18, um, which is why it's so much more, why, like why it's so much more complex. Um, so type chart is extremely important this is one of the fundamental building blocks that you need for mastering competitive pokemon so each pokemon can have one to two types um and each attack has one type each move has one type so um the way that the, the way that pokemon works is that when you use a move it's calculated the offensive damage is calculated against the defensive types of the user so if i were to use a fire type attack against an electric and a grass pokemon it would do two times, a white box means normal, 100%, one time, so it would be two times one, so my fire type attack would do twice as much damage. However, if the Pokemon was grass and ice, it would do four times as much damage because it's two times two. The game will also tell you now um, whether a move is super effective, not very effective, or neutral. However, it's better to know the, the whole type chart because if a move is four times, two and two, or one fourth times effective, it will not tell you that. So it's important to know the type chart it's also important to know in terms of predicting switches, for example, so that you don't need the game, you don't need to have the Pokemon in front of you to know. So like I mentioned, each Pokemon can have two types and those those will cancel out with each other. So if we look at bug and rock, bug is weak to fire, but rock is resistant. So all you have to do is multiply the two types together to find two times one half, which is equal to one. So fire is neutral against bug and rock type. If a Pokemon uses a move that is the same type as it, as the user, if a fire type uses a fire type attack, that po that attack will get a multiplier of 1.5 times uh 1.5 times so that attack bonus is called stab stab as i called it for my first two years <laughs> playing competitively but yeah so there's a big advantage it's almost it's well it's not almost as strong as super effective but it's um it's a big boost if you use a if you use an attack that's the same type as the user so for that reason most pokemon most pokemon will run um types that are at least one uh, attack that is the same type as the user because if a, if a move is going to be neutral and not super effective then you get a bonus for that so i think that's all i want to say here type chart is extremely important it builds on a lot of the relationships going forward um the last thing i want to touch on on the type chart actually is that there are certain types that are that are immune to other types so if we look at it flying is immune to the ground type if i use a ground type attack on a flying pokemon it will do zero damage. It's not, not very effective, it's just a zero. It's immune. Let's see. Electric is immune on ground. Fighting is immune on ghost. Fighting era, poison is immune on steel. Or I should say steel is immune to poison. Psy Dark is immune to psychic. And um, ghost and normal are both immune to each other. So ghost can't hit normal and normal hit can't hit uh, ghost, which is interesting. There is actually a f one move that has two types, which is flying press, but that's an exception and you won't see that very often. That move is effectively a fighting and a flying type attack, um, but I don't think there's any other moves like that. So let's talk about stats. Stats are another very important, very, very important aspect to um, the game. 
So each Pokemon has six stats. Um, HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. Um, fighting cannot hit Ghost unless it has the Scrappy ability. Um, there's two things, there's, when I say stats, there's two things you actually need to know about. Um, first, there's the base stat. So the way that a base stat works is it is all Pokemon have the same, all Pokemon of a species have the same base stats. Um, a base stat, for example, we can see Charizard. This is, these are Charizard stats. Charizard has base 78 HP. All Charizard have base 78 HP. The reason why some Charizard have more HP than others um, have to do with the actual stat value. And that is made up of the EVs and the IVs, which we will talk more about later. I want to talk a little bit about base stats. Um, just so, you, so a base stat at level 50, at level 50 with perfect IVs, a Pokemon's base stat, base 78, it, or Pokemon's actual stat with no EVs and 31 IVs. This won't make sense to everybody, but I want to say it just so everyone's clear. So with no, with max EV, IVs and no EVs, a Pokemon's base stat for all stats except HP is the base stat plus 20. I find that very, very um, helpful when thinking about Pokemon's base stats. So Charizard with no, with no EVs and 31 speed IVs and no nature would have 120 speed stat. HP is different. I believe it's plus, I always forget. I think it's plus 65 but I'm actually forgetting. Um, maybe 85, I can't remember. Also, I'd like to thank you, say thank you to all our European viewers um, in other areas of the world where it's much later. Yeah, thank you. I know it's late, but I, I admire your, de your dedication to education. Um, at level 100, it's different, and I don't play at level 100, so I do not know. Um, but you could easily figure that out by, by looking on Showdown. <sighs> like I said, stats, actual stat values, vary depending on the level, EVs, IVs, and nature. So... We're going to talk more about that later. Just keep it in mind. Um, you can manipulate a Pokemon stats somewhat significant, relatively significantly. So remember earlier when I talked about how there's a lot of complexity that goes into Pokemon. There's a lot of variation. Stats are, are a big reason for, for why that's um, why that is the case. Um, yes, let's move on. Actually, do we have any questions on stats? Is there anything that I've missed? Is there anything that doesn't make sense to you all? IVs and EVs, there's going to have to be a whole... We'll talk a little bit about an overview of IVs and EVs um, later. However, yeah, now we're just going to do an overview. There's a, there, We'll have to do a, a separate lecture for IVs and EVs. How many stats do you get from EVs? At level 50, it's about 65. There is a way for Pokemon to, come, to become typeless by using the move Burn Up on a pure fire type. That's exactly what it sounds like. A Pokemon has no type, no weaknesses, no stab. How are stats calculated for Pokemon that evolve after level 50? There's a calculation done within the game that projects what the stat would be with um, with given EVs and IVs in nature. So um, it just calculates that. So when we're talking about investment, that's a, that's a question for another lecture. How um, how HP and defenses talk. We're going to talk a little bit about HP and defenses in a bit. So we'll move on. Speaking of which, oh, here we are. HP. So let's talk about the HP stats. So we're going to break down the stats a little bit before we move on. Um, HP stands for hit points. It's the total pool of health your Pokemon has remaining. Some Pokemon, or in some games, as you as you lose health, um, you become weaker. So, like a, a, someone with lower health would be weaker than someone with higher health. In Pokemon, that's not that's not the case. Um, in Pokemon, it doesn't matter how much health you have as long as you have above zero. Um, for the most part, there are a couple notable exceptions. So, um, but for the most part, how much health you have remaining does not um, affect your Pokemon's other stats. Um, when you take damage, your health is, re is is deducted. So whenever you take a hit, you lose health, regardless of whether, regardless of anything else, whenever you, you take an attack, you will take damage. <sighs> some notable exceptions, so mo like I mentioned, some Pokemon, get st some Pokemon get stronger or weaker depended on, depending on how much health they have left. That is very rare, and you shouldn't, if you're a beginner, you shouldn't worry about that. I just did want to mention it. Archaeops is one notable example where when it's at half health, it loses half of its attack power which is great. Um, and Darmanitan, as you see here, will actually transform into snowman form, Zen mode form. Um, it won't, it will change in at half health. So there's a couple Pokemon, Wishy Washy is another notable example. Um, and some attacks get, get weaker with health. Zygarde is another one as well. Zygarde will transform. But for the most part, all, all that matters with regards to health is how much you have left. In some games, you can heal. Pokemon is not one of those games, with the exception of there are certain attacks like Roost and Recover, um, and the new move Life Dew. Those attacks restore health, um, and there are certain items as well, the most famous one being Leftovers, um, as well as Citrus Berries, Ayapapa, Figgy, the whole Fiwam Berry, 
um, subclass as well. Those all restore health as well. But other than that, if your Pokemon does not have a move that restores health um, or an item that restores health, any health that you lose is lost until the battle is over. Um, I've gotten this question before, so just to specify, at the end of every VGC battle, your health is restored to full. So it's not like uh, it's not like you have to. It's not like you know melee adventure mode where you have three hearts to heal or whatever. It's you know once um <laughs> once you uh once the battle's over, you're healed back to full. Um, in terms of actual investment, we're gonna have to do a separate a separate lecture on that when we're talking about how, like how you want to invest in HP versus defenses. Um, as a general rule. When you have higher defenses and lower HP, you want to invest more in HP. And when you have higher HP and lower defenses, you want to invest more in defenses. Um, speaking of other stats, speaking of attack and defense, let's talk about attack and special attack versus defense and special defense because this is something that a lot of trainers get, uh, a lot of new players get caught up, tripped up on when they're starting. There's four main stats relating to damage dealt, okay? So there's attack, defense, and special attack, and special defense. And just to um, just to be totally clear, when I say physical, I'm going to refer to attack either as attack or physical attack. Attack is the same as physical attack. It just attack can mean the stat, or attack can mean the like I used flamethrower, which is an attack um, or move. Um, also, I'd like to say congratulations to Mango for winning the Mango. Very very nice. Um, moving on. Attack, aka physical attack, defense, special attack, and special defense. So this next bullet that you can see, the second bullet on your screen that you can see here, I'm going to try and explain with my words, I just wanted to type it out. The way that it works is attack and special attack are identical, and defense and special defense are identical in the way that they function. The reason, for the reason why there's two is that, let's say there was only attack and defense, then there's a compl complicated damage formula that I didn't think I needed to include because it wouldn't make any sense to you because I'm sure it doesn't make any sense to me. So um, the actual formula is extremely, is extremely, extremely complicated. However, let's say there was only attack and defense. Then the, you, let's say I was uh, up against my opponent and I used an attack with my Pokemon against one of my opponent's Pokemon. Then in the damage formula, my Pokemon's attack stat would be calculated, you know, in some way, excuse me, with the other Pokemon's defense stat. Um, to calculate the damage my attack stat their defense stat if you can remember that interaction my attack stat versus my opponent's defense stat um, It's the exact same way except that there are two attack stats and two defense stats So my Pokemon's physical attack stat is calculated against my opponent's physical defense stat just defense stat um, Where if I use a physical type move, so we're gonna talk more about this in a second it's actually the next slide but there are physical and special attacks and if a move is physical if my if flamethrower for example is special but if i used like close combat if i use close combat that's a physical attack so therefore because it's a physical attack it tells the game okay use this pokemon's the attacking pokemon's close combat uh use that pokemon's attack stat and calculate it in combination with the the defending pokemon's defense stat however if i use a move like flamethrower which is um a special attack stat that would be calculated against my opponent's special defense stat there are a couple exceptions to this, mainly Psy Shock and Psy Strike, which use the user's special attack versus the defender's spe uh, physical defense, which is a very a rarity. But for the most part, for the most part, that's not how it works. It's the user's attack stat and the defender's defense stat. So this introduces a very interesting dynamic within Pokemon because, like, let's say my Pokemon is very high physical defense stat. In singles, that would mean that that Pokemon could be a physical wall. However, in doubles, you can't just bring your physically bulky Pokemon in on a physical attacker because there's two Pokemon in the field at all times. So, for that reason, it, 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 you have to play that Pokemon differently. So, a Pokemon like Quagsire or Steelix is traditionally a lot better in singles than it is in doubles. Chansey and Blissey as well. Not great Pokemon in doubles, um, much better in singles. Also not in the game. <laughs> Goodbye. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... It adds a very interesting dynamic to Pokemon because rather than in single battling where you can focus mainly on if you're if let's say you want to use a, def a defensive wall you focus on you max out your HP stat and you max out whatever defensive stat you want a wall for the most part I'm, I'm oversimplifying you can't necessarily do that in doubles because you have to expect to take both physical and special attacks I also should mention there's a new move called fighting press this is a fighting type attack with I believe 80 base power this is a move that uses the user's defense stat instead of their attack stat it's very cool I'm sure it will see a lot of use um let's move on 
Physical and special moves. So I know this might be a little small, bear with me. I wanna show you how you can see what move category, um, body press, sorry, not fighting press. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> there's three categories of moves. So we've already talked a little bit about this, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about it. First of all, there are physical moves, which use the user's attack stat and the defender's defending defense stat. Um, there are special moves, which use the special attack stat of the user and the special defense stat of the user. And there are status moves, which are neither. <sighs> so status moves are a little bit weird. Um, a status move is a move that is not physical or special. I would say that they don't do damage, but some of them do indirect damage, basically. Um, for example, a move like Pain Split does do damage traditionally um there's i mean unless they have the same hp stat but it will do damage to the target however pain split is a, a special or a, a status category move moves like will lewis been toxic which put on status conditions that affect um that affect the target and do damage those moves are also status category moves however they do do damage so um status category status status category moves excuse me they traditionally don't do damage, or they're just not direct, basically. Moves like Protect, Rain Dance, Sandstorm, those are all stat, uh, status category moves. If you look on your screen, you can see the three different symbols if you want to check what kind of move your Pokemon has. So if we look up at Rotom, we can see that it has... I've hovered over Trick, I've selected Trick. This is just in the summary screen. You can see that Rotom has that symbol under Category, which is like half black, half white. Kind of like Yin and Yang-esque. That means that Trick is a status category move. Dragon Pulse, as you can see on uh, Duraludon, is a special move. You can see that kind of with the circles. It looks like someone's thrown a stone into a into the water. That means that uh, Dragon Pulse is a special move. And lastly, for Mr. Fish, for Fish's Rend, you can see there's kind of this explosion symbol under the category. Okay, I don't. Can you guys see my mouse? I'm, I'm just like there, there, and there. That tells you that that move is physical. You can also look online. That's normally what I do if I need to check, just because it's easier than checking in the game. But, um, but yeah. Any questions about stats? Well, let's finish speed and then we'll have questions about stats. Speed is speed is very unique. I'm gonna be completely honest. Speed is speed is a very unique mechanic and one of the most interesting um, mechanics uh, in Pokemon, in my opinion. <sighs> speed is unique. So, with HP, attack, defense, special defense, speed, there's there's this kind of marginal benefit to having slightly more of a stat. If you have slightly more HP, you can survive a move that would KO you. You might be able to survive otherwise. Slightly more defense or special defense, you take slightly less damage from attacks. Slightly more attack and special attack, you do a little bit more damage. Speed is not like that. Speed, if you are one point faster than your opponent or if you are 100 points faster, it doesn't matter. It's the same. So ideally, you would always want your Pokemon to be one point faster than your opponent's Pokemon because that would be the most efficient use of your stat points. So, why is speed important? As you might have guessed, or as you might know, the speed stat determines the order in which Pokemon move. Um, Pokemon move from fastest to slowest, um, taking apart priority, which we'll talk about in a second. So, the faster Pokemon will move before the slower Pokemon. Why does that matter? Why do we care if a Pokemon is faster? Why do we care the order in which Pokemon attack? The reason for that is that, let's say we are having a battle, and I have Dragapult and you have Snorlax, and your, your Snorlax is low HP. If my, if my Dragapult KOs your Snorlax before you can attack, then I've gotten an attack off, um, whereas you were not able to attack this turn, because a Pokemon that is knocked out um, cannot, cannot battle anymore, so it can no longer perform moves and, and advance you towards your victory. So, that's why speed is important, among other things. If you were knocked out, um, or there's, there's other bad things that can happen to you besides being knocked out. Um, there's status, which we'll talk about in a second, like burn or sleep or paralysis or freeze, which are very annoying. And if you can attack before your opponent, you can attack before they induce um, those status conditions on you. Um, speed is extremely important. It's a crucial, crucial mechanic in Pokemon. Um, and for that reason, throughout all of Pokemon's history, there have been a number of moves that you would not use in the main story mode, right? Um, like Tailwind, Trick Room, Thunder Wave, Icy Wind. All of those moves are very, very, very present in, in competitive Pokemon, um, especially in VGC, um, as well as items such as the Choice Scarf and abilities like Swift Swim, Sand Rush, and Unburden. Um, all, all of those things are extremely present because speed is such a crucial mechanic, and a large part of competitive Pokemon is a battle of speed. Priority moves, these abilities, these items, they all play into this, um, this fundamental question of how do you become faster than your opponent. Um, there is one thing I want to mention, actually. Speed changed. Surprise! 
most of you probably already know this, but this is a big change in Generation 8, um, and it was different, uh, different in, than in previous games. Um, so, it changed. The way that it used to work was that when you started a turn, um, and if you were a singles battler, you might not know this because it didn't matter in singles. It did not matter at all in singles. Um, in doubles, however, it was extremely, extremely important. So, let's say we have I have Ludicolo on the field and my opponent has Dragapult. Um, if there's no rain on the field, then my Swift Swim Ludicolo will not be moving before the Dragapult. However, if rain is in the field, then my Ludicolo will be moving before Dragapult. So, what does that mean? Why, what am I talking about here? Why does that matter? You would assume that if I switched in the rain, Ludicolo would now be faster and would move before Dragapult. However, the way that it used to work, and that it worked for all of my uh, my history, playing Pokemon up until this year. So, in previous years, the speed order, and the order in which the Pokemon moved, would happen at the very beginning of the turn. So, there's no rain on the field, um, therefore, my Ludicolo would move after the Dragapult. Even if I switched in Politoed, even if I switched in Pelipper and set the rain, it wouldn't matter. It would not matter. The, the turn order was set at the beginning of the turn, and it's not just, I'm not just talking about weather. If I used Thunder Wave, if I used Icy Wind, those changes would not, they wouldn't help. They wouldn't help at all. Um, and the turn order was set at the beginning of the turn, so even though, even though, uh, my Pokemon, like, were now faster at the end of the turn because the turn order was set at the beginning of the turn, didn't matter. My Pokemon would be moving, would be moving second regardless. The change here, the change that happened was, now, the turn order updates mid-turn, and that's huge for competitive Pokemon. So, if I switch in Ludicolo now, my Ludicolo will move before the, or if I, sorry, if I switch in the Rain Pokemon now, like Pelipper, now my Ludicolo will move before my opponent's Dragapult, which means that, as we mentioned earlier, I have a chance to knock them out, I have a chance to be disruptive, I could burn them with Scald. Lots of, lots of, um, lots of advantages to this update. Um, for this reason, certain moves, like Tailwind, like fast Thunder Wave Pokemon, like fast Icy Wind Pokemon, um, and abilities like Swift Swim and Sand Rush are now much, 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 much better. And they were already good, they were already good, don't get me wrong. Um, they were already very good. However, now they're much better. So... That's a very big change. It's something you need to be aware of um, when dealing with Pokemon. <sighs> uh, we'll talk about priority. Okay, we'll talk about priority. Then we'll, we'll pause for quick questions from the general chat. <laughs> Someone asked, are you going to talk about Prankster? Thank you for asking, Person131. I am going to talk about Prankster. So, we were talking a lot about speed and how faster Pokemon move first, right? That does not apply all the time. Faster Pokemon, do, like, there is a way for a slower Pokemon to move faster, or before a faster Pokemon, and that way is... Priority. So, we talked about moves earlier, and we talked about how every move has a type, right? Every move has a type, and every move has a category. So, Flamethrower is a special move that has a fire type type. There's also something else you need to know about each category of move. So, each move has a power. Um, Trick Room is minus six. Well, you can't win them all. Trick Room is minus six. Speed checks only apply within priority brackets. So, every move Every single move has a priority, and most moves, like we mentioned earlier, Flamethrower, Close Combat, Surf, Scald, Hurricane, those moves all have neutral priority, aka they are plus zero priority. However, some moves have boosted priority. Quick Attack is plus one, Protect is plus four, Extreme Pleated Speed is plus two, um, I believe Fake Out is plus, fake out is plus three, um, and what that means is that when we were talking about speed, speed checks, using the speed stat, only applies within a Pokemon's priority bracket. So, what that means is that if that Dragapult uses a move that's plus zero, but it's way faster than my Sylveon, but my Sylveon has Quick Attack, which is plus one, even though, um, even though my Sylveon is slower than Dragapult, Quick Attack is a plus one priority move. Therefore, Sylveon will attack before Dragapult. Some moves also have negative priority. As the chat mentioned, Trick Room is minus six, not minus seven. And, um, Roar is like minus six, or minus five, I think. I'm not totally positive on that, but it's, it's low priority. So, um, priority makes a big deal. Most priority moves are balanced in some way. Most of them are relatively weak. Like, the ones that come to mind for me are like Mock Punch, Fake Out, Aqua Jet. Those are all 40 base power. Bullet Punch is 40 base power. Vacuum Wave, um, is 40 base power. So, um, yeah. The other thing to note is that some moves, or some there's some abilities change priority, specifically Prankster. If you move, if you use a status category move, like we were just talking about, Prankster gives that Pokemon plus one priority. So, these are all things you need to think about with speed. Um, oh, it is minus seven. Let's go, Wolf. 
Um, Sucker Punch is plus one. That's a good example. Sucker Punch is a plus one. Extreme Speed is plus two. Now, do we have any questions about stats? Just really quickly. Do we have any stats questions? We've talked about all the stats. we talked about speed. Um, we're going to move on to status and conditions next. And just so everyone's aware, we, this is slide 11 out of effectively 20. Fake us plus two? I thought it was... Wait, I thought it was plus... I, thought, I think it's plus three, but I'm not positive. Does activate trick room swap prior brackets? It does not swap priority brackets. That's a great question. No, priority is still the same. So mock punch is still plus one. It doesn't go to minus one. Is there an easy way to learn what moves have priority? There is a link on Cerebi, uh that Juicy J just linked, which has priority. So that's a good way to do it. Fake is plus three. That's what I thought. Yeah, guys, who, are you finding this? Is this helpful for you all, by the way? I know we have a lot of people here. Are, are you are you guys finding this helpful? Is this good for y'all? Is this format good for y'all? I'm still figuring it out myself. Ah, good question. If two Pokemon have the exact same speed stat and use a move of the same priority, um, it's a 50-50 coin flip. Remember when we were talking about probability management? Well, I hope you're good at flipping coins. So, um, <laughs> it's a 50% chance to move first if the Pokemon is the same priority. Or is the same priority, same speed stat. I abbreviate speed to SPE and special defense to SPDEF. Good refresher. Kind of basic info. This is the beginning, right? It's going to get more complicated as things go on, but we we have to start with the basics. And I'm sure, you know, actually, if you guys watch the end, I'll sure, I'm sure you'll learn something new. I'm sure most of you will learn something you did not know before. Like how many of you learned that Trick Room is minus seven priority. Extreme Speed is actually only plus two. The move with the highest priority is Helping Hand. Prankster, mo Prankster sets a priority to plus one. Um, I don't think there's any prank, pri I don't think there's any status category moves that, wait, does it add plus one? I'm actually not sure about Prankster, because I don't know how Prankster Protect works, but it doesn't really matter, because moves that are like, moves like Protect and Helping Hand are going to be fast. Like, they're, it doesn't matter what, where, like, in what order within Prankster they move. Wait, does it add? I think it does add. I think it adds, yeah. Okay. Let's talk about status, because status is, uh, is very important to talking about Pokemon. So, status. Let's talk about status. There's five, parentheses six, parentheses bracket seven. There's seven status conditions. We're only talking about five slash six of them. Um, burn, sleep. Paralysis, Poison, and Freeze. We're just going to go over really quickly what each of them do. Um, there's a couple ways you can be inflicted with status. The first is you can have it... Um, there's some moves that just straight up inflict them for some of them. For everything except Freeze. Um, the other way is that some moves will have a secondary chance um, to inflict a status condition. So, let's talk about Burn. Burn is one of the better status... Well, they're all good for different reasons. Burn is a very good status um, condition. So, Burn means all of your physical attacks their attack power gets cut in half um and at the end of every turn you take 1 16th damage i actually believe that is halved if you have thick fat that's how it used to work but i don't i don't know anymore for sure but you take a little bit of chip damage at the end of every single turn um and you have half like ha each of your physical attacks are cut in half power so if you um if you get afflicted with a burn and you are a physical attacker that's very bad um, burn is one of my favorite statuses for that reason because it's it basically weakens Pokemon significantly. Um, oh, I forgot to talk about stat changes. Oh well, next lesson we'll do a we'll do a little we'll do an addition. Um, poison. So regular poison is very easy to understand. It does one eighth damage per turn. One eighth damage per turn. However, there's a second type of poison which is afflicted only through toxic, I believe, um, which uh, is badly poisoned. So the way that badly poison works is. The first, um, the first turn you take 1 16th damage, then you take 2 16th damage, then you take 3 16th damage, then you take 4, etc, 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 Poison Fang. Oh, and Toxic Orb, that's right. Um, so, if you, this, this timer can be resetted if you switch, so if you, if I, I'm taking, if I'm taking 4 16th damage, and 2 layers of Toxic effects, thank you. Um, if I'm taking, you know, if you're taking, um, 4 ticks, 4, 4 16th damage, and you switch out, you will still be badly poisoned when you switch back in, however, um, your timer is back to 1 16th. So that's something that's very important to know. Um, the next thing you want to talk about that we want to talk about is um, you can only be afflicted with one status condition at a time. So I, you cannot be burned and poisoned. You cannot be burned and uh, frozen, et cetera, et cetera. You can be confused while having any of these other conditions, which is why confusion is kind of a weird status. Same with attract, which we'll talk about in a second, but yeah. Um, Paralysis, for the, so for those of you who haven't played for a while, Paralysis has changed. Um, it is, instead of being a one-fourth reduction in speed, it is now only one-half. Um, however, the thing that makes Paralysis broken, which if you've watched my videos, you know, you have a one-in-four chance of not being able to move every single turn while you are paralyzed. And Paralysis never goes away unless you're holding a berry, which cures it, or you use the move Heal Bell Aromatherapy. No, Burn halves the, you halves the damage of the Pokemon who is burned. So, 
<laughs> Paralysis' speed multiplier is much better now that now that speed changes take effect immediately. However, the real the real thing that makes paralysis the most thing that makes paralysis the most dangerous is the one fourth chance to be unable to move. Next, let's talk about sleep. So sleep is uh, it makes you unable to attack for between one and three turns, and that chance is random in every case except for one. So um, if you you have to sleep for at least one turn, so you, you will be out of condition for at least one turn, um, and then from there you have a one and third chance of waking up after one turn of sleep. One, one in three chance of waking up after two turns of sleep, and one in three chance uh, of waking up after three turns of sleep. Keep in mind these probabilities change as you go through. So if I've slept for two turns already, I know that um, I have a 50% chance of waking up on the third turn and a 50% chance of sleeping for the third turn. Heal bell was removed? Oh, goodbye, Bronzon. Um, so this is a great question that Fr uh, Frosty Blade just asked. Sleep used to be broken in so many ways. They have fixed it a little bit. It's still broken. Um... The way that sleep used to work, <laughs> stay with me, if you slept for two turns and switched out, that counter was reset. So you'd have to sleep for, and and you would have a set sleep turns on each Pokemon. You don't need to know all this actually, but like basically switching, if you slept for a turn and then switched out, that turn wasn't counted. You had to stay on the field. That was broken. They fixed it. Now if my Pokemon sleeps for one turn, switches out, and comes back in, I've already taken one turn of sleep. So now I've, I have a one in three chance to wake up this turn. Um... You cannot sleep for more than three turns. The exception to the sleep for X and for one to three turns rule is if you use rest. This is important. If you use rest, you will always sleep for two turns and then you wake up. So um, that's the exception to the sleep rule. There's a lot of exceptions in Pokemon. <laughs> oh, actually, okay. We've already talked about this, but Esten asks, asks a, uh, a really good question. Pokemon, the way that it works, if you would do decimal damage, is it truncates. So if a move would do like 9.9999999 damage... Like, like, for example, Sandstorm does 1 16th, um, 1 16th damage per turn, and let's say you have that, like, 1 16th equals 9.8, or whatever, 9.9, 9.9 repeating, that's, that's 9 damage. Pokemon truncates the decimal, so, um, 9 point anything is just 9, 8 point anything is just 8. So that's important to know, just in general, for you to know, um... Sorry, this is taking a while. Freeze. Let's talk about the, the most broken status. Freeze is the most broken status, and I hate it, and it should be removed from the game, in my opinion, or it should be that... It's stupid. It should, they should weaken it in some ways. Freeze. Freeze is no. It's, it's the one status that you cannot inflict with a move. Like a like. There's no like freeze beam or whatever. Freeze is so broken. If you get frozen, which you can only happen uh, from the secondary effect of a move, um, you have a one in five chance every attack you use to thaw out. Otherwise, you're just unable to move indefinitely. You can also force a thaw by being hit with any fire type attack or the move scald. You can also thaw yourself by using certain moves from behind freeze or from frozen, um, such as scald. However, other than that, you're, you could be frozen indefinitely. There have been games where I've been frozen for nine um, or ten turns. And uh, unlike singles, there's no sleep clause in VGC. So you can put all your opponent's Pokemon to sleep. In fact, that has happened to most VGC players at some point. <laughs> um, well, maybe not most, but it's happened to many VGC players. Um, fire types can be frozen, which is unfortunate and I hate it. Um... Confusion. Confusion is the last one. So confusion can be uh, cured by switching out. Um, every time you are confused, or every turn that you remain confused, you have a 1 in 3 chance, used to be 50%, but you have a 1 in 3 chance to fail to attack and instead to damage yourself. Confusion is very frustrating. Um, it, did get, it did get better because um, it used to be 50%, which is broken. They also weakened Swagger. Um, I actually am not sure the probability of snapping out of confusion. Does anyone, does anyone know it? Um, there's a couple other weird conditions, like Attract, which is a 50% chance to not attack, but only works on um, Pokemon of the opposite gender, and there's a couple other ones that I don't really feel like we need to talk about, like Curse, which are special, but yeah, that's for the most part. Um, something that most singles players do not know, and maybe most of you do not know, this is very important. So, guys, did you know that if you use a spread move, like Rock Slide or Earthquake, it's not its actual base power. The base power is actually multiplied by 3 over 4. So that means that uh, Earthquake, which is a 100 base power move, is actually only 75 base power in doubles. Did you all know this? So, for example, a move like um, Super Power is actually... So So let's talk about Stab, right? Earthquake is normally... Um, uh, in singles. Earthquake is a 100 base power move. Um, in singles, that's a 150 effective base power move because Landorus is ground type. Earthquake is ground type. Here's a little review. Landorus gets the stab boost, STAB, same type attack bonus. Um, and that means that Earthquake gets actually 150 base power. However, 
in doubles, um, that doesn't, it's not the same. So in doubles, Earthquake is actually only a 75 base power attack if it's targeting multiple Pokemon, whereas Superpower is a 120 base power move, which that means that, well, actually, I can't do this in my head, so let's pull up the calculator, because I, oh wait, yeah, so that's, um, because 80 times 1.5 is 120, so, so, uh, Earthquake in doubles is only 112 base power move compared to Superpower's 120, uh, power move. So Landorus, is actually better off if it wants to KO something using superpower, assuming they're both neutral, in doubles. That's very, very important. Um, Dragon, Dark, Dragon Darts is the exception to this. Dragon Darts works as 250 base power moves rather than a spread 100 base power move. Um, yeah, um, there's exceptions to this. So, if a Pokemon protects, let's say I use Rock Slide. My, one of my opponent's Pokemon protects, the other one gets hit by it. Spread damage reduction does apply. Even though I only hit one Pokemon with it, it doesn't matter. Spread damage, uh, uh, spread damage reduction still applies because I've targeted two Pokemon. However, if I knocked out the other partner and Rock Slide only had one target, um, then in that case, Rock Slide would actually be at its full 75 base power rather than getting the reduction. So there is a way to get around this in, in, in doubles. Um, yeah, so that's very important. So there are times where this reduction goes away. It's at the time of targeting. Um, the other thing is that, let's say I knocked out, let's say same scenario, I use, instead of Rock Slide, I use Earthquake, and I've knocked out one of my opponent's Pokemon, still gets the spread damage reduction, because it targets my partner. So Earthquake is, and Surf, and Muddy, or not Muddy Water, Earthquake, Surf, um, Brutal Swing, moves that hit the whole field, including your partner, those moves only do not get the reduction if you've knocked out both your partner and one of the opponent's Pokemon. Um, immunities work the same way as Protect, it's, it's all about targeting, so... Um, yeah, that's very important to know in terms of calculating damage. Yeah, if your partner and their partner are both KO'd, um, then it's full damage. Misses, again, do not count. It's all about the targeting. So, I hope, I hope that was valuable, because that's very important for knowing about double battles. If it misses, yeah, like I said, still gets the reduction. It's only if the, po it's only if the Pokemon is knocked out. There's no exceptions. Phantom Force, same thing. It's only about, um, it's only about the reduction. So, let's talk about abilities. Each Pokemon has one ability at a time um, that's set at birth, except you can change it with the ability capsule, kind of. Um, and they normally have between one, and, they, all Pokemon have between one and three abilities. Um, these are crucial. Um, this is part of your homework, so pay attention. Um, they do lots of things. They can affect the stats, like Intimidate and Swift Swim. Uh, they can provide defensive boosts, like Solid Rock and Ice Scales. Um, they can provide offensive boosts, like uh, Adaptability, Tinted Lens. They can activate field conditions, which we'll talk about later, uh, Psychic Surge, Sandstream, etc., and they can do a ton of things. Abilities are crucial, so um, this is part of your homework, so uh, yeah, this is very important. Items. Each Pokemon can hold one item. Um, some items do not work if they're held, like uh, potions or revives. Like a lot of people who have played like just through the game, um, but have not played um, Pokemon competitively, or VGC, or so, uh, singles, whatever, um, the, those people are like, oh, like, I don't understand Pokemon so easy. Why wouldn't you just hold revives or use revives? Those aren't allowed. Some, like, ma basically, the terminology I think it is is that man made items Pokemon cannot hold. Don't ask me why weakness policy is not man made. I do not know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, um, there's hundreds of items. However, um, there might actually be thousands. Don't know. Anyway, um, there's normally only, I would say, about 30. There may even be less that are, like, majority. Like, of course, there are certain, there are certain, uh, like exceptions to that, like, like there are certain items like Keyberry, for example, which is not super common, but you should know what it does, for example, um, stuff like that, but, oops, not what I wanted, um, mostly it's like 20 to 30, I would say, are, are actually used, um, some of the more common items that you should know about are the choice items, which are choice band, choice scarf, um, and choice specs, which apply a 1.5 times boost, um, to a Pokemon's, uh, stats, either a spe speed, special attack, or attack, but at the cost that the first item you use once you enter the field, you have to use until you switch out or faint. Well, you have to use it until you switch out, basically. Um, <laughs> yeah. Other common things are berries, citrus berry, um, and then figgy, ayapapa, uh, wiki, aguav, and mago berries. Those are all heal health at different um, thresholds of HP. Type producing berries like aka berry, pasho berry, um, and rindo berry. Um, and offensive items like life orb, weakness policy, but there's there's a couple more that I haven't mentioned. Yeah, so items are important. We'll talk more about items in a future lift uh, lesson. Lift, whatever. Wolf. Well, um, natures. I found this chart by uh, the the only credit I can find is someone named Brain Eater. So Brain Eater, thank you for your chart. 
Um, if you would like me to credit you in a different way, just let me know. I don't know who you are. Um, but I, you made a great chart. So, natures. Natures are very essential. These things affect the stats. We actually should have talked about this with the stats, but that's okay. Each nature multiplies one stat by 1.1 times and another by 0 0.9 times. Now, you might think that lowering your stats is actually bad. Um, however, it's normally good because on most Pokemon, there there's a stat you want to be weaker, or at least it doesn't hurt to be weaker. So, um, Choice Scarf applies a 1.5 times boost to, uh, to speed. Um, so... For example, if you are running a Trick Room team, you might want your Pokemon to be slower. Using your nature to lower your speed stat is actually really, really good. However, uh, since mo or not however, but since most Pokemon only use one of their attacking stats, there are mixed attackers. Um, but most Pokemon use either their attack stat or their special attack stat for with the most part. Like 80%, 80-90% of Pokemon somewhere in there. Those, like, those, they will only use one of their offensive stats, and so the other one you don't really need. So for a special attacker. Yeah, yeah. For, on, for the test, you will have to fill out um, this chart by yourself. Because it's important to know. Um, or you, you might be asked about, like, just the important ones. Like, you don't need to know, like, lonely or, like, I don't know, mild. Those are not, like, super important. But, um, yeah, it doesn't hurt. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. So, for a special attacker, lowering your physical attack stat can be good because there are certain moves that take advantage of the physical attack stat, such as foul play um, and also confusion. Um those calculate those calculate based on your attack stat, so it's good to weaken it. Um, there's also yeah okay as mentioned by uh, C Galaniol, there are certain examples like um, where you want to lower your stats like on stack attacka for beast boost, but for the most part, um, yeah you, for the most part you won't you like there's certain there's certain natures you don't use. Um, yeah, there's also a couple natures that just do nothing. They don't they don't raise anything. They don't lower anything. Um, although I did lose to a serious crowd on at worlds. For the most part, they're not good. I think almost all. I think there's very few examples where having a nature that is nothing is optimal. Like almost, I don't even know if it's possible. But yeah, um, let's move on. EVs and IVs. So this is just a very general overview. This is probably gonna probably gonna be what I talk about in the next lesson. But yeah, so EVs, effort values, and IVs, individual values. Um, and I'm not talking about the Pokemon EV. <laughs> um, Determine the actual stats of a Pokemon in combination with the base stats. So, for those of you who remember earlier when we talked about base stats and actual stats, um, this is this is what I was talking about. So, um, IVs are set at birth. They used to be set at birth completely. Now you can train them with um, hyper training. Hyper training allows you to artificially make any Pokemon stats um, 31, which only happens at level 100. But yeah, so. IVs are a number between 0 and 31. Um, what that means is that at level 100, you will have whatever IV you have at each stat. Each Pokemon has 6 IVs. Um, whatever IV you have in that stat is how many extra points you have at level 100. So an IV of 16 on the attack stat means 16 more points in the attack stat at level 100. It's roughly halved at level 50. <sighs> yeah, so uh, at level 50, for the most part, it correlates to about 15 extra stat points at level 50. Um, so it's uh, it's important. It's really important. 15 stat points are huge. Like that that's nothing, or that's not nothing to sneeze at. Um, yeah. So yeah, like I said, IVs used to be set at birth. You can change them now with bottle caps. It's also relative. It's very easy to breed here. Um, so in this in this generation, so that's important. Um, EVs are how you influence your Pokemon via training. So all Pokemon have zero EVs when they are caught or bred. Um, these are influenced based on the training you do. You can do this via the PC, which is easy, or you can do it via training in the wild, which is also easy, um, just depending on what you want to do and, and the time you have. Um, um, we're going to talk more about these in a future lecture. EVs, um, you have 508 points of values to allocate, and you can get about 65, maybe slightly more if you wanted to. Um, maybe up to 60, 66? I don't know. You can get a lot. You can get basically influence your stats a large amount using EV training. So um, keep this in mind. This will be very important for a future lecture. I'd recommend you do some research on your own because it's slightly complicated. So um, yeah, this is a good thing to ask about in the Discord if you do not know about EVs and IVs. I know I, this is just a very quick overview. Um, can you lower IVs with bottle caps? No, you cannot. You should be able to, in my opinion, but you cannot, and that makes Trick Room Pokemon much harder this generation to get. Field effects. Field effects are things that affect the whole board, um, or at least half of the board sometimes. Um, these are, I just wanted to give a quick overview of these. There are more common ones like Trick Room, which reverse the speed order of Pokemon, so the faster Pokemon move last and the slower Pokemon move first. Tailwind, which double your size um, speed stats for uh, for four turns, um, including the turn it's set. 
terrains, which... Guys, I learned about this. You have to know. Listen, is every, I'm going to give you a second. Pay, if, you, if you tabbed out, pay attention right now. This is very important. I'll give you like, I'm going to give you like, 30, like 20 seconds because it's actually really important. This is, I, nobody talked about this. Nobody knows. I got to tell you. Did you know they changed terrains and they are no longer 1.5 times multipliers? They're now 1.3. They're nerfed. So when you're doing damage, and I don't know if damage calculators are wrong. I am sure that showdown is wrong. 100% sure. Nobody knew. Nobody told anybody. Terrains are nerfed. Welcome. Welcome to VGC 2020. I'll give you a second to process because that's a big deal. So terrains have different effects. They multiply, except for Misty Terrain, they multiply one type by 1.5. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. 1.3 times damage. Oh my god, I almost said. Oh. 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 Oh my god. Pikachu almost. Pikachu is a. Guys, you can't see what next to the green screen. Pikachu is just standing there menacingly. He almost shocked me. He's making me do this. He made me wear the suit. Whew. Okay, let's move on. Terrains multiply one type by 1.3. 1.3 times damage. Okay. Um. Huh. Yeah, they multiply one type by 1.3 times damage, with the exception of P Pikachu. And by Pikachu, I mean Misty Terrain. Um. I will give you one guess for which type each of the terrains multiply. <laughs> grassy terrain multiplies grassy type attacks. Psychic terrain multiplies psychic type, type, type attacks. And electric terrain multiplies pukumuku type attacks. Moving on. Reflect, light screen, aurora veil. Yeah. You can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Reflect, light screen, and aurora veil. Here's the thing you need to know. Hey, singles players, guess what? These things aren't as broken in doubles. Well, maybe they're more broken. In singles, these things uh, multiply, they, they cause a reduction of two times, okay? Which is broken. It's broken, okay, in singles. In doubles, similarly to spread effects, they don't, they don't reduce as much. Um, so reflect and light screen do not multi, they don't have damage anymore. I think it's 1.5 times. Oh, I'm so sorry. Wait, talking about terrains. Grassy terrain heals all Pokemon that, all terrains only affect Pokemon that touch the ground. So not flying types, not Pokemon with levitate. And not Pokemon that were affected by Telekinesis, which was removed from the game, but I always wanted to use it, but I never found an opportunity to, so I'm really sad. So, they only affect Pokemon that touch the ground. So you can fake out Halucha, you can fake out Cresselia. Recipe Cresselia, you'll be missed. Um, Grassy Tran. Halves damage of Earthquake, halves damage of Magnitude, do not use Magnitude. Um, does not have other ground type moves, with the exception of there's one more, um, but maybe not. Um, and Air Balloon, thank you, Air Balloon also. So Grassy Tran heals all Pokemon by leftovers amount, which is 6% at the end of the turn. And also raises grass type attacks by 1.5. 1.3 times. 1.3 times. 1.3 times. 1.3 times. Please. Boldus? Oh, Boldus. Misty Train. Protects all Pokemon that touch the ground from status. Um, and also, protect all Pokemon that touch the ground from status. So you can't burn, poison, freeze, confuse, paralyze, anything. Um, and it also halves all damage from dragon type attacks by one half. Um, Psychic Train. Prevents all priority moves from being used on... Uh, Pokemon that touch the ground, and also provides a uh, boost to Psychic type attacks. And Electric Terrain prevents all Pokemon that touch the ground from being slept, falling asleep, including rest. Um, though I've done that twice in singles battles. Um, can you infatuate through Misty Terrain? I believe you can, but I'm not positive. But I think you can. Um, electric multiply by Electric by 1.5. No sleep. Um, yeah. Reflect Light Screen Aurora Veil. I already talked about Reflect and Light Screen, and Aurora Aurora Veil is the same. So Reflect and Light Screen are both physical and special. Um, reflect attacks, physical attacks by, I think, 1.5, um, light screen by 1.5 as well. Aurora Veil is both physical and special, so it's way better than reflect and light screen. However, it can only be set during hail, so that's the weakness of Aurora Veil. Um, you cannot stack Aurora Veil and reflect, so you cannot use reflect and Aurora Veil and have it be two multipliers. Um, they work on the same, they work on the same, like, uh, like counter. So if you have reflect and Aurora Veil up, it only counts one of them. Some less common ones are Magic Room, which removes all held items. That was kind of good last year to stop Xerneas um, for five turns. Magic Room and Wonder Room work, work like Trick Room. You can Oh, Trick Room, by the way. Trick Room, Magic Room, and Wonder Room, you can reverse. So if your opponent sets Trick Room, if you have a Trick Room Pokemon in your team and you use Trick Room, it will return the Twisted Dimensions to normal. So that's important. Um, so yeah, Magic Room removes all held items. Wonder Room, I wish was good. It's just not. It switches defense and special defense. Um... And gravity, which increases accuracy and makes all Pokemon land on the ground. And prevents certain moves like high jump kick. No, I think I was tested and I think that it, unlike the spread damage multiplier, 
Um, I don't think that Reflect and Light Screen can ever have single target damage multiplier. Yo, Panda Global, thank you very much for five gifted subs. I really appreciate that, guys. Welcome to the Academy. Please sit down. Cool. Um, this is almost the last thing, so we're almost done, guys. Um, the very last thing I want to talk about is interpreting exports. Um, let's just, I'm just going to walk you through an export here. This is my Dracovish export um, from Showdown. Because I know that not everyone can read these, so um, I want to just make sure that we all are literate in this chat. So... Let's talk about, about this export. So the first thing you see is it's Plakia. We're going to line by line. Plakia, parentheses, Dracovish, and parentheses, at choice band. What this means is its nickname is Plakia, parentheses, the actual species of Pokemon, with is Dracovish, and the at means the item. So this is nickname Plakia at the Pokemon holding the choice band. This is how you read this. Ability, strong jaw, straightforward. Level, 50. Eevees, this is how I've invested in Mr. Fish. Um, 4 HP, 252 attack, and 252 speed. Um... Adamant Nature, IVs, zero special attack, um, and then the four moves. Nothing too crazy here, but I know some people don't understand what the ats and the plakia means, so yeah. Gender, I don't have it in Showdown. If I had uh, if I had it in Showdown, it would say it, I believe. Let me just see. I will check for that for you. And if I put shiny in, it would say shiny. Oh, Dracovish doesn't have a gender, but if a Pokemon had a gender, Dralyodon, let's say Dralyodon's female, then it, it, would, it would say Dralyodon parentheses F. Zero special attack. It's not actually zero special attack. I just wanted to show you guys what it would look like. Um, yeah. Also, thank you for 2,000 viewers. I think this is the most I've ever had without being hosted by somebody. Um, IVs are all 31 unless specified. And happiness, if it says happiness, then it will say happiness. If you have happiness set. Um, Mr. Fish is genderless. Yeah. Here's your homework. We're almost done, guys. Here's your homework. So, this screenshot is taken from VGC Stats. I seriously recommend... Pause. Open up Twitter. Follow VGC Stats, okay? It's an incredible resource. Zach um, runs it. He's a great guy. He's actually helping out with Pokemon Academy here, so I super recommend you use it. He's also holding online tournaments with prizes at the moment, but honestly, the prize is just um, the experience, in my opinion. So go follow him. Um, yeah, he's running tournaments. Um, he's doing. He's doing. He's done so much good for the community. He runs a resource called VGC Stats. I'm actually gonna link VGCStats.com just so you guys. Um, so what Zach, what Zach does is he compiles um, he compiles usage stats, and this is still this is still sorry 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 I'll move my head can't see. He compiles resources. He compiles usage stats that get for all the Pokemon that earn points throughout the season, which is an incredible incredible resource um, and should not be understated. Yeah, can we get an exclamation point stats or exclamation point VGC stats? We're going to talk about weather next lecture. Um, so. This is the user stats um, for from VGC stats. Again, I recommend you follow him. I recommend you participate um, in the tournaments. Can we also get exclamation point Reddit for um, for r slash VGC? I think that's also useful. It's, that's another very useful um, website. So the website's not updated because Zach runs this website um, specifically for live events, and we haven't started VGC twenty events yet. So so there's no there's no points that have been earned. So in January, the website will start being updated regularly. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so that's a great resource. I recommend you check it out. The, the other thing is that... Um, also, I recommend you guys play in these tournaments. Um, somebody won, not this past week, but the one before, where they had never played in a tournament before ever. It was their first tournament, and they used Galarian Weezing. Um, and they won the tournament. That was uh, Lucas from, I believe, Belgium. Um, so I, I seriously recommend you check you check them out. I, I recommend you play in these tournaments because they're super fun. Um, they're on Saturdays, and um, Zach is a great guy, and he's doing really good work for the community. So I recommend that you check this out. Your homework for this week is to memorize the type chart. I may be doing pop quiz next week. Um, I, w I wanted to put together a, uh, a thinking, 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 thinking. I wanted to put together like a homework sheet. I'm going to try it for next week. But again, I was so busy this week with my birthday and I was out of town until last night. So, um, and I had work today, obviously. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah. So I was very busy, so I didn't have time to put together the homework sheet. Even this, I was kind of, um, kind of close. So that's the homework. Um, thank you all. And then.